Hey there, good morning. I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And today on Habitat Hints, we're going to actually be talking about algae on ponds and how can you get rid of that algae because there's a lot of thoughts about introducing certain fish and so forth about that but really that's not the answer so i'm really lucky to have here with me nbc's andrew branson he's going to tell us all we need to know about how we can get rid of that nasty stuff there on our pond let me flip this around and we'll get to start talking with andrew good morning andrew how are you today hey lucas i'm doing okay good 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 andrew tell us you know, we're going to talk algae this morning and, and really how we can get rid of this. So I see there's all kinds of nasty algae in front of you right there. So tell me a little bit about how does that form on the pond and why and all that good stuff. Right, right. Yeah, this, this uh, slimy algae, pond scum, that's another name for it, I guess. Uh, it's a real common problem here in Missouri. Uh, a lot of ponds have it. The, uh, the, uh, the biggest issue is if you have a lot of it, it can choke out a pond. Uh, it could actually even lead to fish kills because it's pulling oxygen out of the water at night. But it's a sign that you've got too much nutrients in your pond, too much fertilizer. So almost to the point of like, hey, you know, you think you're doing great you, with your pond, but you have just too much, too much of a good thing, I guess. Yeah, like I said, a little bit, like we're seeing right in front of us, uh, that's not bad. Uh, it's not really scattered throughout the entire pond. So this pond, as far as algae, is actually, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, when it's near the shore like this, it can cause problems for swimming areas and fishing, you know, to kind of drag your lure through that is kind of a pain. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, if you have it and it's really getting out of control, mm -hmm. you need to do something about it. And the first, the first thought a lot of people have is they hear about grass carp and they hear about this fish they can put in there and it's gonna swim around and clean up your pond and grass carp do eat some aquatic plants, that's for sure, but they do not really eat algae. Um, small grass carp might eat it a little bit, but quickly turn to other plant sources. So grass carp are not an effective control on this algae. So really the best thing to do is number one, if you can eliminate the nutrients getting into your pond, that's step one, because as long as you've got that fertilizer, nutrients coming in, you're gonna have an algae problem. Uh, classic example is cattle. If cattle have access to your pond, cattle are in there fertilizing the water, and it's almost impossible to get on top of this algae if you've got cattle having access. Mm -hmm. Also, if you've got uh, agriculture fields around your pond, and there's maybe a lot of fertilizer from those fields washing in, that's going to be an issue. Um, but if you don't have that, and you don't have any way to kind of adjust the nutrients, usually you're going to have to spray this with a chemical of some kind. Now, when you say spray it, I mean, spraying some pond with a chemical, are those chemicals harmful to the fish that are in it? Or how, what, is it a specific chemical that's not yeah. gonna affect the fish? Or Yeah, you definitely wanna make sure you use the right chemical and that it's, it's made for aquatic use, made for pond uses. And the classic chemical for uh, algae is a copper based. So some sort of copper sulfate. Uh, like I said, it's a real common issue. So if you go to any farm and feed store that sell you know lawn supplies and things like that tell them i've got algae in my pond what i need to do for it they're going to know exactly what kind of products to to uh, send you to and it's going to be a again a copper based product but uh, so once you have the product and you know how much you just read the label and you know how much to add um, again you're going to be walking around typically spraying if it's a chemical if it's a liquid you're going to be spraying the patches of algae uh, if it's granular you're going to be kind of scattering the grains on that algae but you're you're not just dumping it in the pond and letting it go everywhere. You're targeting that those algae patches. Now, I mean, I know you, it, it has to be geared towards the, the chemical, geared towards it, towards the pond. But will it have an effect on fish or any of the animals? No, it's, yeah, it should not. It's you know these chemicals are made for this type of use. And again, as long as you stick with the amounts. Yeah. Um, but I think what you might be touching on is is yeah you do have to worry about a fish kill um, because when you're and that's why we recommend that you do not treat a pond, you do not start killing off plants and algae that are a problem uh, once the water temperature hits 80 degrees. So when, in the heat of the summer, when the water temperature is 80 or higher, boy, that water temperature is warm, it's low in oxygen. You know, fish are trying to breathe whatever oxygen's left in the pond. And at that point, if you start spraying and killing this algae, 
it's going to start decomposing and pulling oxygen from the water on top of all that. So that can create a fish kill, a low oxygen fish kill. So when you're treating algae, we recommend do it in the spring before the water temperature gets to 80 degrees. And even at that point, you treat just a portion of it. You treat maybe a third, a fourth to a third of the problem area. Give it a week to 10 days, treat it again. And, uh, and it, it's real effective. But again, you don't want to do it in the heat of the summer when that water temperature is 80 or higher because that, that can create a fish kill. All right. And, you know, uh, where can uh, people tuning in or watching today get more information on uh, how to treat algae on their local, on their pond and, and so forth? Yeah, we've got, a lot of, we've got a lot of great information on our website, a lot of the answers to these common pond problems. But, yeah, just go to the Missouri Department of Conservation's website and type in algae control or pond plants, just something like that, and you'll get to a page that has this topic as well as others. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, also while you're on our website, go to contact us, search your county, and you'll find who your fisheries management biologist is for your county, and you can contact them, and they can walk you right through this, uh, even come out and assess the ponds, you know, if they need to. And there's, you know, no charge for any of that. It's all just the service we provide. All right. Well, we appreciate it, Andrew. Thank you so much for doing this for today. And again,